There you are. Oh, I'm Sorry. here. Hello. I was muting my Slack. There we go. Hello. <laughs> hey, welcome to another episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today, I have Adam McQueen, who does content at Clue. What's going on, Adam? Not too much. Not too much. I actually just recorded a podcast right before this, so I went from being the host to the guest now. And I am on my third coffee this morning, so I don't know if that's going to be a good third or bad coffee. thing for this episode. What, I know it's really bad. What time is it? It's, it's only 9 a.m. Don't judge you know, me. I, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I probably had like two coffees by 8 a.m., but I don't know if I had a third one. Maybe I should have because I don't even know what time it is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm great. I'm very excited to be here. Um I love your stuff on LinkedIn, and so it's an honor and a pleasure. Thanks. I also love your stuff on LinkedIn, love connecting with other content people, and just trying to find ways to be more original, which is surprisingly hard, uh, even though we're all you know unique individuals, we all have unique brands, but how can we get a message across when everybody's trying to do the same thing? So I'm excited to talk to you about that today, because you have a lot of interesting perspectives and a really cool project, which we're going to be talking about, which is building a community. And you have the Compete Network, which is Clues Network, I guess, uh, podcast network. And we're going to talk about your failures and successes so far. Let's do so, it. Yeah. So when did, when did you launch the Compete Network? So the Compete Network officially launched, uh, shoot, everything's a blur. Maybe about a month ago, a okay. month and a half ago, I think, right before the end ish of the quarter. Um, and just a little context on what it, what the Compete Network is was is made alongside kind of thirteen founding members of industry experts, like in this space. So the space that we we live in is clue is competitive enablement, competitive intelligence. So folks that are that are leading that within their organization. Um, we, we, we founded it alongside some of the best minds, the best people that are already creating content themselves in that space and kind of brought it together under, under one roof. Okay. So these are all people from different, com- they're not all from Clue. No, this is people from across the board. We've got, uh, my, my friend Andy from ClickUp, my friend Clara from Slack. We've got folks that have been doing it for a couple years. Some people that are industry experts. We've got um, folks that actually run other product marketing communities because product marketing often runs compete as well. Um, yeah, there's there's a variety of folks that um, are at different types of company, different stages of company. So it's really this kind of smorgasbord of of folks that honestly I've met and we've we've known at Clue for a while. Um, which which we'll get into how we kind of decided or found these founding members was honestly a cool part of our own content initiatives at Clue. Yeah, I mean, we're, so these so this is a podcast network, just so that everybody listening, sort of, right? It, it like the originate like it's originally been up. There are four Clue original podcasts or shows. One's a video series. Three of them are a podcast series. One of which is more of like a live kind of call in show that then gets repurposed as a podcast. And then there's been we've brought in some folks that have. There's about three or four folks that have created their own podcast and now part of the network. There's a couple of newsletters as well around product marketing. Okay. There's some folks that have built really good courses too that are part of this network as well. But I'd say sixty to seventy percent of the content on there today, for now, like version one launch is yeah podcast content and so these people is this does this link out to their own podcasts or they're also creating content specifically for the compete network so for for launch it's been linking out to their stuff so amplifying their reach if you have everyone under this one network uh they're they're kind of cross promoting between one another so it's totally folks have created their own thing is total ownership still it's 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 a linking out type of thing and then with launch as well as we created so we always had our own podcast that that i'm the host of but then we created for launch three new what we call clue originals with some of our close friends that came on the podcast with me so for example claire smith at slack even it's a clue original i our team like helps produce alongside her but it's like her show so it's sort of like that one is 
owned by the compete network it fits under the compete network but it's um it's it's definitely still kind of centering and um around the our, our, our founding members i suppose okay cool so it's like content curation slash original content from people inside and outside of clue like even the clue yeah. original sound like it's people from other companies. yeah there's a mixture our revenue enablement coach is leading one of the content um one of the new shows and she'll have other guests on but she's a clue host she's incredible jody geiger shout out jody um another one is our own director of product marketing alongside uh, a gentleman who runs his own business in barcelona around competitive comparison pages so there is this kind of mix oh i know him and federico For, yeah i just federico I've, yeah yeah he was on my podcast too was he? No yeah. way. I got to listen to that episode. Federico <laughs> yeah, yeah. is is freaking Stack awesome. Against. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he was a funny one, actually. He joined me on a live episode of our show and we loved him so much. We're like, let's do a spinoff series. Let's do something. And this was kind of like the nexus point, right? There's so many, there's so many folks in the space that want to create, want to share their knowledge, want to connect with others. Um, but they don't necessarily all have the means to do that. Like a yeah. lot of these people are they're doing a full-time job product marketing running compete like that's no small feat and so i think one of the like value adds and what, what we're hoping to do as well is like support them in that kind of the content production the, the, I, there's a lot that goes into this i mean you're running a podcast right now like it's not just show up rock the mic no it comes out everyone listens like there's a lot of marketing that goes into it that's time consuming and you need to be an an expert in it you need to have done it a lot and so that's definitely one of the things where there's a lot of folks with a lot of ideas. They want to connect with others. They want to share what they're learning, what they're working on, do's and don'ts for others in this space. And we're really trying to help facilitate that through shows today predominantly, but also in the future, events, a community where people can connect organically. It's not just always new shows. It's like where one-on-one -on -one conversations can happen. Yeah. But this is definitely the starting point. Love it. Okay, so tell me when you have the idea... What was your original hypothesis? The original hypothesis, the idea for, for the network is something that myself and our director of marketing have been bouncing around for a while, something along this lines. And the reason why was because one from our customers at, at Clue, Compete is a very new space, really new. So, so many people were like, I just want to connect with others and learn how to do it. Like we obviously edu educate a lot. A lot of our content educates a lot of our our content does that but they just they want to hear from others in their shoes like it's it's there's so many people a lot of times people are running compete as teams of one so they're in this little silo bubble am i doing this right where do i start there's no there's no clear roadmap for it so yeah. there was this like real need from the customer base for sure that we'd heard like so doing customer research like we need somewhere to connect we need somewhere to learn engage like um that was one thing we were definitely hearing and then myself r running our podcast i mean I come in doing content at Clue and I'm like, I'm, I can't BS. I, I don't know the space well enough yet. How do I learn? I want to talk to the best people in the space. And that's how the podcast started almost a year and a half, two years ago. Okay. And as I talked to more and more folks on the podcast, too, they had the same thing. Some, some were like, hey, I want to share what I've learned. I went through so many errors. I screwed up so many times. I want to share these things with people so that they don't. Or even folks that are who I deem as experts, they still want to learn. They want to connect with other people too. So it was like this desire to connect from the customer base, from people that I was talking to on our podcast, uh, a couple events I'd been to. There's like, there was just this, this clear demand for, for some sort of point of connection between everyone. And we, we felt that the great way to do that is by putting together some of the are some of the best vo voices and most vocal yeah. advocates for this community, this compete community. And, and yeah, that's, that's how it started so far. Okay. So the community aspect of it, I mean, I get that you're getting the leading voices in the space. You're putting all the content together. Are you doing something to get them to connect with one another? The, the creators themselves? Yeah. Or uh, yes. the rest of the community. So, yeah, this is this is one that we, this is an ongoing thing. As we mentioned, it launched a month ago, and it, yeah. it's it's something that's going to be an evolution. It's like meet, meet the demand of like what people are wanting, and then how can we level up? So it's going to constantly be a lot of feedback, and 
one of the things in terms of um, an early success that we saw again that worked within our own Clue content is our live show, the live version of our podcast. It became this sort of, it, I just started to notice we'd have a, one of these guests that ended up becoming a founding member and there was just so much back and forth during a live, live session, just chit chats about different rabbit holes. And so one of the things we realized is like, these virtual or continual events where there's an opportunity, there's a topic, but it's an opportunity for people to connect back and forth there was one thing. So I think an event is a great way to bridge the gap between having all of this content and not necessarily having to make it like a forum or a hub, like whatever you want to call it, maybe a Slack channel or wherever you want to host your, your, your community, like where those day-to-day conversations happen. So I definitely think that, that is one thing that we've started to do and we'll have our first virtual event in late August too, where our founder members will be leading it, but it'll be a lot of more back and forth people to meet people to introduce themselves. And then the, the last point is, yeah, finding that building that one spot where people go together, because the reason we did that, I think as well is that you don't want to make a community for the sake of it. Like I would, it was, it was, let's, let's start to activate this community through good content, through people we know that are really active, that want to make this a better space than they left it. And if we just set up a Slack channel and said, go, that's, that's a recipe for failure on a community side in my perspective. I mean, I'm looking at my Slack right now. I've got about six community tabs on my Slack and I'm, I'll be honest. I only look at two. Yeah. I can't. If it it's just doing that, like, I think it's a very, you're not thinking about from a strategic level or you're not thinking about like how you need to think about what people actually want and just setting up a Slack channel and saying that's your community. That's not how you actually build a community. And so in terms of like getting that feedback places to connect, it's, it's really going to start with those events and then somewhere where there's going to be day-to-day conversations that sprout off of, Hey, we've got a listener base listening to, Andy's podcast or yeah we went to that event here are the three things I learned what did you disagree with what did you agree with like really great content and open content that really tries to elicit feedback I think is a really strong starting point for building a community that actually has substance to it it's not just a list of blog posts that we're dropping out yeah job postings right okay I love this so um I know you just launched but I guess you already thought about this what metrics are you tracking to see if this is working um from a metric standpoint uh i would say one of the one of the first things like you said there's not like a um a central hub yet for people to go to so in terms of one of the things we've used is just like a newsletter subscription so subscriber base to our newsletter to keep up to date on all the information there's a lot of content out there right so one of the things is just simple sort of like audience growth how many people are subscribing to the newsletter Another one is sort of qualitative feedback. And that's from the founding members because they're hugely important to the success of this. Yeah. Are they a part of it? Are they, how are you supporting them to drive it, but also give them guide rails? You're not just handing it off. Like, how does that relationship work? I wouldn't say that's metrics, but you definitely have to canvas qualitative feedback that these people feel that this is good for them, working for them. And same from, uh, same from um, the audience, the community. So, Are they posting on social about it? Are they replying? Like I've had several emails being like, I can't, like, this is so exciting to me. Like, uh, like a lot of different folks on that qualitative feedback, which is something that I've always kind of hammered home is that qualitative feedback. If someone goes above and beyond to reply and tell you that they enjoyed a podcast episode or a blog article or social post, like that means the world to me beyond just metrics. Um, So I'd say sort of your audience growth for sure has, has been one um, the qualitative feedback. And then again, it's going to be as we launch these kind of events, like attendance numbers, registration numbers, act, there's another one that we kind of look at. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to quantify, but like engagement during sessions kind of thing. Oh yeah. It's like how much back and forth is there? Is it like one of those, I'm sure you've sat through some of those webinars where it's two people talking for an hour and it's crickets. And it's like, how many people are actually like sitting and engaged? Like I, my dream stay is like, these sessions, they could be shorter, but people are going conversation. There's people disagreeing, yes. agreeing. Like there's a lot of back and forth. So sort of, we haven't nailed that one down yet, but my, myself and our events manager are thinking like, how do you quantify like engagement level during sessions too? So it's a work in progress for sure. Um, again, 
there's a lot more to be rolled out, but those are some of the early, early kind of metrics we've been looking at. Awesome. So, so far, I mean, you've been planning this for a while. I think I talked to you first, was it back in like May or something? I think it was May when I, we first spoke. Yes. Uh, what major challenges have you faced so far or failures? Ooh. Well, you'd have to talk to our branding team. They probably had to. <laughs> if you talk to our branding team, who are the real heroes behind so much of this, if you go check out the site for like right now, the Compete Network, or you see some of the Clue original shows, like the branding team did an incredible job of that. And that was so many dealing with so many requests from myself. Like, can you do this? How do we make a site look awesome? Like, how, how do we make this podcast art look great? Like, how, how are we going to build these clips out on social? So, I just want to tip my cat to them because like I take that bit for I don't take that for granted but like that's a huge thing that happens behind the scenes yeah. that I don't do day to day but I know that there was a huge obstacle or like challenge we had to like sourcing cam like sourcing photographers to get our founding member headshots in different regions of the country it's one in Alaska one in Barcelona one in uh New York like there's just people even just like little things like that like that was a big one from a content standpoint, because we're on a content podcast, production, schedule, cadence. Yeah. So my our content team right now is a team of three. And we've really built out a strong cadence for our own show. How it goes onto YouTube, the clips that come from it, the social posts, how it gets distributed on email, how it sits on the websites, the three points recap we do. Like there's all of these distribution elements to one podcast because there's so much. What I love about podcasts is there's so much meat on the bone, right? There's content for days, weeks, months yes. after a podcast conversation. And when I was a team of one, I'm like, there's so much being left. I need more people on my team to help do it. And as a team of three, we're doing a good job. But now we got three more clue original shows and we want to equally pr it's not just about the shows that we produce we've got all these awesome founding members in there that are looking for our support as well from a production standpoint how yes. do you create good social clips how do you help cross promote so you've kind of building out a production schedule which is like booking strategy walkthroughs with the guests pre-interviews like when you do that from one to four that quickly like yeah you better be planning you better be planning and then also supporting others in terms of their own their own shows. The, the good thing about kind of time to value or time to launch, that was one of the reasons we wanted to work with a lot of founder members that had their own content already is they they've already kind of worked themselves in that like in content creation, which is like a huge if you're able to even launch a podcast solo, like I tip my cap to you doing another job like that's incredibly difficult. And so in terms of support, like there will, there is support for them, but it's also like, it's not as much as like going from zero to one kind of thing. You yeah. Know I mean? So you're actually now producing like four separate different podcasts and distributing them all. We are indeed. We are indeed. At least the, the clue originals we like to say, and there'll be more in the works. There's going to be courses coming, uh, more video shows. Uh, and so that is, yeah, that's been a that's been a big undertaking. It's it's um, it's one thing again to produce one. Like what we do uh, at Clues, our own podcast is a weekly cadence. So you got to yeah. be like really booked in advance. One of the things that if anyone is looking to launch their own podcast themselves, looking to launch their own show themselves, is one thing we realize that actually will help make this successful and help set expectations from an output deliverable standpoint is. Um, almost looking at it from like the Netflix style rather than we're going to do a monthly weekly bi-weekly episode. Let's do eight episodes. Like let's, let's commit to eight episodes. Let's flesh out what those eight episodes will look like. Let's book the guests in line those guests up and then we can deliver on it rather than the dauntingness dauntingness. Is that a word? I should know if that's a the word. Or not. Probably. The dauntingness. I mean, I get it. I get it. You get what <laughs> I'm know. trying to say. It's not like we're in yeah. content. Don't need to be good with my words or anything, right? Um, <laughs> there, there's something daunting about having a weekly schedule for like indefinitely. Yeah. So that having that starting point and end point, it's like, hey, we're going to experiment with the show. We think you'd be great. Eight episodes. Here's kind of the concept we're thinking. What are you thinking? Who would you like to have? And it helps kind of make it uh, doable. Like, yeah, instead of being like, we're going to do a monthly thing forever for the indefinite future. So, for example, our show with Claire from Slack, 
which is back office to boardroom. She's freaking awesome. Is going to be six day episodes about how compete pros managed to get a strategic seat at the table, how they got the ear of execs. Okay. And that was one. And then this, the one with Federico and our director of product marketing is a six part video series. They're going to break down competitive comparison pages. They're just live teardowns of real ones in the wild, like Drift versus Intercom was episode one, actually. Like what they liked, what they disliked. Love it. Um, and so, yeah, those are, we kind of contain them as like a Netflix style season one, six episodes. Let's see how it goes, what we can do better. We're starting this from scratch. You're starting this from scratch too. We're going to learn from it. Maybe there's a season two in the works. Maybe there's a different piece of content in the works. Okay. Like, let's, let's, sling, let's sling some mud. Okay, so that's a really good idea, and, and that's actually making me think because it does feel kind of like I'm I'm publishing podcasts weekly, mm -hmm. uh, and I also don't have this kind of end goal or I don't have these themes to them, which I think could be really interesting. Like, okay, the next six weeks, I'm only going to get people from these industries on, uh, and we're only going to be talking about these topics. Uh, Oh, my cat is joining the podcast right now. <laughs> let's oh, let's say there. hi, buddy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Just a meow in the background. <laughs> okay, um, you said, I'm not like sweating so much right now. We were just talking about that earlier. We're in the European heat wave. <laughs> oh my um, lord. Yeah. So that's a really good way to do it. And so after it, so like if it works out, do you continue working with these found, like with these founding members on a different kind of series or what do you do after? I mean, the, this is the thing. This is what I love so much about, we just zoom out as well in terms of our content strategy and this community strategy. What I love about this is it's sort of like the world's our oyster and we're listening to these experts and also we're going to be canvassing and listening to the feedback from the audience. And what I love about it is it uh, it's opened the box in terms of what we can create as a content team. Yeah. It's content traditionally is purely you've looked at it from like what, how many blogs do you produce? But now it's like what content can be so many different things. So many different things influence how people, what people perceive your brand as what might influence them in the sales cycle. Yeah. Like the feedback we've heard from different kinds of content, different kinds of shows has been really cool. So in terms of like what comes next, it's really going to be a case by case basis. Um, I do, I'm very passionate about building an, some events, uh, virtual events where we've already, we've got an in-person event lined up as well. We can meet and greet where we're hoping to get a couple of the founder members there along with people within the community to really sort of organically build this. Um, we had, that was something when I went to our first in-person conference a couple months ago, it was just like, it made me realize how much in-person connection yeah. can like how how powerful it is it's 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 nuts how powerful it is to just have that in-person connection where you don't even need to have like perfect topic content lined up it's like let's just get us in a room and chat yeah like that that that, that kind of connection it makes a is, difference oh does it ever um so i'd say those are sort of the we've got some plans in mind ourselves as well as like, here's ones that we see when we listen to the market, like what are some good opportunities <clears throat> for content that we think we could create? Who do we think would do well with it? But in terms of like what the founding members want to do, that's another thing we're working on now. Now we have an events manager who's going to be like a really strong point of contact. Like what do they want to do more of? What do they really not want to do? What do they want to see in this community as it comes to be? And so it's going to be really active. Um, a lot of feedback, like it's definitely, not like a scalable process to begin with here at all. Um, but I think that's the point is really putting that time and effort. I think yeah. people see that. I, I think so too. I think that's kind of the move. Well, scale is good at some point if you have something good that you can scale, but sometimes we need to just go back, think about it a little more and say, how can I really provide more value to this community? A hundred percent, actually, someone from uh, a, a fellow named Sumo, who was the community lead at Thinkific, joined us at Clue and had a little session. One of the things that stuck with me from him was always like, when you're building community, do, can I, can I cuss? Yeah, that's, that's okay. <laughs> oh, no, I won't. Let's do the stuff. He didn't say that. Do the stuff that doesn't scale first. Yes. Do the stuff that doesn't scale first, because that's the personal touch. Like I said, like in-person connection is infinitely more it is infinitely more meaning, meaningful so do those kind of things that 
are a little bit more personalized, a little bit more, you've just taken that extra step. So in terms of our own like mini community building, it's like I reach out to people after I, we screen cap all the attendees that were at our sessions, who left a message, who dropped a question. And then I go and reach out to them after. But like, yeah. here, I, I love this question. Here's a other podcast we did on it. Or what do you want to hear more of? What didn't you like? What did you like? Here's our upcoming session. Like just building that connection. Shoot, it takes me a lot of time. It's like I block out a couple hours on my Fridays to do it. But it's worth it, right? And yes. I think that's one of the one of the the points around this community building is it can be it can be a lot, but you need to do those personalization. I think I was joking at you with the salesperson yesterday. I'm like, the amount of outreach and prospecting emails and messages I get that are just like not personalized at all that I delete right away. I'm like, large amount, the, it, indescribable, amount. <laughs> indescribable <laughs> amount. And I was just joking with him, and I saw he actually showed me he's. A shout out to Ben. Um, he's written a couple like personalized outreach emails that like won us a deal, like closest like a 50k deal. And I'm like, it was just that little bit of personalization that yeah. he did on. I know this is in the context of sales now, but it just made me think when you're thinking about content, community building, like you and really need to build a scale. relationship. Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that feels like a good place to wrap this up. Uh, Adam, I guess, I mean, one of the best places to reach you is going to be on the Compete Network. Absolutely. So everybody listening, go check that out, but also connect with Adam on LinkedIn. And you did mention you're on Twitter as well. Uh, I'm not really on Twitter anymore too much. That okay. was back when I was writing on basketball a lot, actually. Oh, I used okay. to Twitter all the time back then, but that's another podcast. That's for another podcast. All right. Uh, great. Well, Adam, thanks so much for spending this time with me this afternoon, or I guess morning for you this afternoon for me. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. And stay cool over there. Oh, that's not going to happen, but <laughs> melting. I'm like crying this whole podcast. <laughs> crying inside, crying inside. <laughs> For the listeners, she's put on a brave face throughout, though, which I appreciate. It's like that's my glasses are things. fogging up. <laughs> that's resiliency right there. All right. Well, thanks, Adam. Thanks, everybody who watched and listened to this episode. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Farewell. And that's the end of the podcast right there. Hope you enjoyed the episode, but please don't go just yet. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It'll help other people like you discover us and get the same insights, and it would really help us out a lot. Um, thank you for being a loyal flying cat and for listening. See you next time. <laughs>